Uh, All right. Clicking. Just yep. Do you want to let them use the mouse or the yep? Whatever's easier for you. Now you got to do display settings in the middle. Oh, Jesus! It just automatically does the yeah. display settings top in the middle. Oh. Yeah, drop down swap. There you go. All right, so that was a great interview, Davis. Uh, you said you wanted ten minutes at the end to tell me about some project that you've come up with. Yeah. Uh, I got exactly ten minutes, so when right. I say go, it's going to start, yep. and I'll give you the one minute. Finger wag. Yep. All right. So go ahead. Are you ready? Awesome. All you. All right. So this is uh yeah just ten minutes to take some time to talk about the program. So I have chosen uh, your school as you are aware um, about this Geneva Christian College. Uh, only a small school, and what I pretty much wanted to talk uh, you know with with you about is the fact of you know using your facilities and using you know your kindergarten to grade twelve students um, you know to have you got this program. So. Pretty much, it's a mountain biking program. So uh, this community program will aspire students to be lifelong participants in this physical activity of mountain bike riding. So mountain bike riding kind of has become quite popular in the past couple of years. And the government have kind of seen this and initiated uh, a heap of uh, funding for trails around Northwest. Uh, and you know, we have a lot down the South, down at Derby. Um, so the whole idea of this program is, you know, there is a need and I definitely want to facilitate this to the best of that ability. So some requirements, uh, so we've got some physical and some non-physical, just to name a couple. Um, you know, students in this kind of area have got to have some kind of moderate mobility because they're going to be on a bike um, and they might have to get off a bike as well. Um, might include some manipulative skills, um, some basic locomotive skills. Uh, I think. Most important is hand grip, upper body, torso and hip leg strength. Now this program will facilitate, um, you know, to actually bring about these uh, skills for them. So non-physical activity requirements as well, you know, basic recreational skills of play, communication skills, social interaction, just to name a few. There are, you know, a couple others. So I have teed up um, the Devonport Council and the Tasmanian police. And pretty much what, the, what happens is they have an initiative where the police will actually go around uh, the northwest coast and they will pick up bikes that are sort of not being used or they might be lost or they might just be lying around and people you know, don't want them there. And they'll actually work with the council um, and the council will actually distribute these bikes um, for free They'll distribute them to groups, they'll distribute them to pretty much whoever wants to, you know, have these bikes. Um, and Geneva, your school, you actually have some. So they've actually taken, uh, you know, initiative with this. Right. So there are a heap of bikes. These are just some of the bikes not being used. Um, so it'd be great to get them out and have a go. So there's some junior bikes and there's actually adult size mountain bikes as well. So using this program from kindergarten to grade 12, you know, we've got equipment to do that. Um, so the mission statement is the Mountain Viking program is dedicated to the development and inclusion of students by providing recreational experiences that improve their quality of life and strengthen relationships in the community we serve as a lifelong practice. So this is kind of the idea of um, what the program sets out to do. Um, there is a basic, um, sort of like a curriculum um, plan of what this would look like and for each uh, sort of year group level, um, we've set out goals uh, for the year. Now these goals uh, are derived straight from the Australian curriculum, so they do work in correlation with that. And then uh, we've kind of um, broken it up into term objectives uh, and how we're going to sort of assess how they are developing. Uh, and then we've got some activities. So first up, you know, in, in, in Kinder for example, we might do a wheel board activity too with boundaries. So they can understand, you know, what a line is and, you know, probably don't cross it. Um, you know, next, year one and two, we might look at using junior bikes. Um, so talking about road rules, doing a road rule activity. Uh, moving along, year three and four, um, you know, we're going to start to get them to, you know, demonstrate what acceleration, what deceleration of movement looks like. A bit more spatial awareness, so, um, you know, we'll do some spotlighting to assess that. 
and do a bike obstacle course, blah, blah, blah. So as we're going along, we are um, developing these skills. So using gears, um, how to uh, safely brake, um, how to get in, into different positions. So um, yeah, sort of explaining how movement concepts work and how we can implement strategies into that so that they can fluently move uh, into these specialised skills. So by, by grade nine, 10, we're actually gonna take them off campus. So they'll go down to the wild Mersey tracks and they'll actually have a go at some of the trails. Uh, they'll do some time trials so we can sort of get a bit of a benchmark going for them. And then in grade 11, 12, um, we wanna try and set them up, uh, sort of understand the role of outdoor recreation and how, how it actually plays to improve um, you know, lifelong physical activity. So you know, this can include you know, equipping them with skills in first aid because they might wanna go after school with some mates and if they don't know some basic first aid, you know, that to me is probably unsafe. Um, yeah, and bike maintenance as well. So how to service your bike and things like that. So I've actually teed up one of the teachers at, the, or at your school, um, your design and tech teacher, and he's actually really willing to come on board with servicing and maintenance uh, of the lesson in grade 11, 12. And uh, yeah, he seemed really happy with it. Uh, and he's got a lot of resource, a lot of tools, so that they can use it, so that you know, we don't have to make you guys pay for you know, extra tools and stuff like that, um, which is fantastic. Uh, I've also uh, been in contact with a business owner in Latrobe and he owns Sports and Cycles on Gilbert. Um, he's actually been fantastic. He, he actually sponsors your school already. He nice. does the sport awards, nice. um, which I didn't know, which is yeah. really interesting. Nice. Um, and he's, uh, he's, he, he was saying that he's got 10 years of perceptual motor experience behind his belt. So he seemed really? very passionate. Um, nice. Very passionate with the stuff, so I think he's very willing to get on board, get these kids outside, and um, you know try try these new recreational experiences. So he's actually said that he's willing to give out gift cards as prizes um, to donate equipment like helmets, gloves nice. for the program, and he said if I have a weekend free, he's um, he's willing to take on some students and they can have a go at using his bikes that he he hires. So. Um, we're definitely going to be correlating um, that into the program as well. So these are the, um, the trails. So Wild Mersey is, I guess, the, the logo or whatever, um, owned by the Kentish uh, Council. And they're pretty much, so the first stage is where we will run the program. But the idea is, as they get used to and you know, understand and specialise the skill, you know, they can actually go on to stage two, three, you know, when that's being developed. I think they just finished stage one and they're on to doing stage two. So, you know, there is a transition and they can do that by joining a mountain biking club or um, things like that. So, the way that we're going to, I guess in a way, transition this through the program is, um, I've teed you up about uh, transport and you guys have your own buses um, that you use. And the trails are only about a five minute drive. Um, it's not very far, it's pretty much just down the road. Um, which is really good because in grade seven, eight, I think we wanted to ride to the trails and then as they get older, we'll actually drive there, drop them off, drive will come back, um, things like that. And then at the trails, there's toilets uh, and there's a bike wash bay. Most of it's gravel, so you, you're not gonna be able to probably um, put your normal wheelchair, stuff like that. If you had like maybe an off-road one, you could if they wanted to come view or um, whatever that looks like. And supervision by wise, uh, you look at your HB teacher and a support teacher, if needed, from the IEP goals uh, of the student um, and whatnot. And probably more staff if the ratio is too high as well. Yeah. So pretty much the budget for this program is the bikes are free. Um, we put aside about a hundred bucks for the maintenance because that you know will cover you know your tubes stuff like that. And the school will keep the bikes, yeah. so that's the schools to keep. Uh, transport, the school has said it's 150 bucks per day uh, and then driver and fuel on top, so about 50 bucks. And you do two excursions in the year, so we kind of roughly estimate about $500, um, give or take. For one minute. Uh, but I have noticed that your school 
um, I wanted to focus on autism. Um, and these are just some of the uh, strategies that I'm going to use on you know, how to focus on that um, on those students. So I've got instructional routines, so we've got little like flashcards they can use when we're out in public. And we're just going to teach whole skills as well, just so you know, we can minimise it, stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, I guess in a way, autism you can't, not everyone develops the same. Um, so I'll kind of briefly put some things on what they might be difficult in. So I guess for me, uh, for them to really be successful in uh, this long life act physical activity, I think seeing these things being achieved, um, you know, for them being able to interact socially, things like that, I think that's a great indicator um, to see how they've developed and how they can be ready for that transition. And Gotta cut you. Right, done. Yeah, good stuff. Did you have more slides? There? No, that's, that's it. That's the last one. That's the last one. Nice job, man. Is this gonna happen? Well, <laughs> interesting enough, the school were like, yep, we want you to do it. And the business owner was like, yep, let's sit down and do it. <laughs> so let's do it. So yeah. I'm like, okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> I told you. This yeah, legit. Some opportunities for you. I was very surprised because I just couldn't get over how much support <laughs> 